So we start day two. So after day one, though, like, like, what was your reaction to hearing all of the lies that, you know, that you know was going to come out? Well, I was, it really kind of opened my eyes to a lot of what was going on, Rock, to be honest with you. And I started to look at the case a little bit differently. All right. You know, and the situation a little bit differently. So we come in day two, and, and, and at some point, the judge... I think could see John this thing kind of going away. Oh, I think so too. But but literally in in, in within the bounds of what he thought the rules were. And of course, I objected to that. Mm -hmm. He allowed the state to get into evidence of my client's other drug use, which had nothing to do with this. Right. I was at the bench, and literally, in John's right, he was watch it, Kevin. Watch it. I mean, he's like he's he getting ready to to, to 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 hold me in contempt. I go. Are you the, the, the third prosecutor judge? Because you're supposed to be the judge. You're supposed to be impartial. You're not on their side, and you don't have to keep throwing them bones. You've thrown them like five stacks of bones over there, and you're not. This, you got to call this. This, ball, this, this is the judge that's yeah, your friend. This, well, he's the judge. I mean, he's no, still a judge. Oh, yeah. I, he's still a judge, but I am like in his face. Mr. Ed, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. <laughs> he's like, he's pushing me back. Yeah. My partner, Paul, is with me. He's. Oh. He grabs me and pull me back because I am coming unglued. Yeah, that's when he said he was uh, he was going to hold you in contempt. Yes, he was. This is incredible. Go the ahead. government hired an expert, Paul Meisner, who's my partner at the time, knew the judge well because the judge and he used to try cases together years ago before when they were younger. And he's cross-examining the expert, and the expert testified based upon the testimony, the observations, and the hate, heat, and this, that, and the other. In his opinion, my client was under the influence of ecstasy at the time, and resulted in the killed his wife and you know he didn't examine anything you know but he said based upon the description of the lay witnesses they described the 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 pills that my client took that they were ecstasy so paul gets up there to cross-examine their expert and this guy had degrees out the wazoo i mean mm -hmm. he, he was a toxicologist he was a chemist i've identified drugs over the world so, but his theory was that someone told him what these drugs look like, and based upon what they told him, these drugs must have been ecstasy, but he never saw them, never tested them. And, and Paul's like, you, sir, you, I'm just you're so impressive. You are just so impressive. Th th this is uncanny, your ability, just, just your ability to just see things. You Absolutely, I can see what it is. No problem. And, and no problem at all. That's right. Okay. Um, okay, there's no problem. And you can identify what it is? Yes. He goes, okay. Can I approach the witness? Yes. He goes, Paul put two tablets in front of him. He goes, I want you to take these. Take these. This is a glass of water. The guy goes, well, I'm not going to take those. Mm -hmm. Well, Paul goes, well, well, you know what they are. Go ahead and take them. Well, I don't know what these are. How would I know what these are? And the judge goes, what? And Paul goes, Mr. Expert, those are called aspirin. And what's concerning to me, if you can't identify aspirin, how in the world could you identify something that was made out of some bathtub in some trailer park? You're dismissed. I mean, it was like, the jury's like, yeah, yeah. 